Here's a fraction, 18 thirtieths. I hope you've already noticed that it's not in lowest terms. The greatest common factor, or GCF, is 6 between the two numbers, 18 and 30. So we divide 18 by 6 to get 3, and 30 divided by 6 is 5. So in lowest terms, this fraction is 3 fifths. Now we have a fraction that involves variables, 18n to the 4th over 30n to the 3rd. It also has a GCF, only now the GCF is 6n to the 3rd, because the n to the 3rd in the denominator goes in to the n to the 4th in the numerator. We've already worked with variables with exponents and fractions, so we know that 18n to the 4th divided by 6n to the 3rd is 3n, and 30n to the 3rd divided by 6n to the 3rd is 5. So this new fraction, in lowest terms, is 3n over 5. And now we're going to apply that same concept to something called factoring a polynomial, in this case, a binomial. This binomial has two terms, and the GCF of the two terms is the same one we had in the fraction. 6n to the 3rd. So we divide each term by 6n to the 3rd and write the 6n to the 3rd on the left, put parentheses around what remains after we've divided each term by 6n to the 3rd, and we've just factored out the greatest common factor of the pair of terms in a binomial. Notice Another thing that we've done is we've essentially applied the distributive property in reverse order from how we usually use the distributive property. If you do now apply the distributive property from the middle line, 6n to the third times the quantity 3n plus 5, if you multiplied both those terms, the 3n plus 5 times 6n to the third, you would, of course, get the binomial at the very top. Here's a trinomial. There's three terms. We're looking for the GCF of all three terms, and that's 5n. So we divide each term by 5n, and we write the 5n on the left, and we write what remains inside the parentheses. And now we factor this trinomial as a product of a monomial and a trinomial. Here's another one, a little more complicated. You probably look at the 32, the 20, and the 14, and you realize that each one of those is divisible by 2. And then for the variable a, the first term only has an a to the first, so that's the best we can do. And the, for the variable n, the last term only has an n, so our GCF is 2an. And now we divide that out, and there's the result. 2an times the quantity 16n squared plus 10an plus 7a squared. Here's one, looking carefully. All of the coefficients are divisible by 6, and the n to the third in the third term goes in to the n to the fifth and the n to the fourth. So the GCF is the third term, 6n cubed. And we divide everything by 6n cubed, but we have to remember to leave the 1 behind, as shown, that's a common error. You do 6n cubed divided by 6n cubed, and then you leave it blank, and you end up with a binomial, where it still should be a trinomial inside the parentheses. Here's one with a negative in front of the first term. Well, we can look that over and get that the GCF is 3n to the fourth, and divide that out, and the first term in the trinomial inside the parentheses is still negative. We also have the option of thinking of the GCF as negative 3n to the fourth, and then the negative comes out, making the first term in the parentheses positive and the other two terms negative. It's often common to write the first term as positive, but certainly not required. It would be more common in this example to change our final answer to negative 3n to the 4th times the quantity 5n squared take away 8n take away 3. Here's another one. Since the first term is positive, we'll just find the GCF. We won't try to make it negative. That's 9an. We factor it out, and inside the parentheses, we still have the first term positive. We leave the subtractions alone. 
and we get 9an times the quantity 4n squared, take away 3n, take away 1. And notice 9an divided by itself is 1. Only in this case, instead of plus 1, it's take away 1. Many polynomials can be written as a product of a monomial and a polynomial. This is done by finding the greatest common factor of the terms and applying the distributive property.